number one news um just want to send out my thoughts and prayers and kind of you know to his family and stuff because i'm the only kind of guy who i'm very familiar with from the only way it's says because this, this might have been the last time i watched it um it was a bit of a phenomenon in the uk it still is at the moment people are you know it's essentially provided um a career and a direction for a lot of people who probably wouldn't have had um, much to kind of look forward to in the entertainment industry for the most part especially when you consider how classes it is right it kind of gave a, a, a bit of an, a, a scope and a lens and kind of magnified a side of england that a lot of people kind of maybe turn their noses up a little bit especially in media um that is obviously the only way it's essex that basically focused on a group of girls and boys from an essex region i think it might have been chingford or something along those lines right um they were all in various stages of their career some of them were ex-professional footballers some of them owned beauty salons some of them were working in pr some of them were just socialites but um that interaction that kind of reality tv kardashian style of um viewing jersey shoreish real world uh way of kind of looking into their lifestyles was very eye-opening and kind of resonated with a lot of people across the uk so much so that it's now become a bit of a global phenomenon and like i said most of these people are still kind of riding off of the success of that show now the last time i watched it was when um nick uh mick sorry norcross was on it and that was i guess the the era of the marks and the Gemma collins and all these kind of people and then since then i haven't really watched it because i'm not really a big um celebrity tv i mean reality tv fan but i do remember mick norcross coming across really well on the show um he was a bit of a father figure to a lot of the boys on there gave them a lot of business advice a lot of advice about family and that's the thing that i loved about the don't anyways essex again there's a lot of people turning their nose up at it but i love the idea that as vapid and as materialistic as some of these people might be i love the fact that all of it is kind of anchored in this idea of having a family a relationship having babies uh making a business uh building a legacy whether they were running around and you know uh, sleeping whoever that they, they, they could whenever they went to ibiza i just love the idea that there was these dudes and guys these kind of quote-unquote let's say alpha males on tv who were kind of giving guys a different view and a different goal or a different thing to look up to and to look forward to or something to emulate right something else that wasn't just like being a flagrant womanizer right it was kind of centered around being a bit of a family man and being the head of the family and breadwinner and securing like i said securing a legacy amplifying your voice giving voice to the unheard da, 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 da. and even some of the people in there they would, they would always kind of make whenever they made money they'd always go back to their sort of area where they lived at to open a barbershop a salon uh a tanning whatever whatever it may be right they did everything kind of in their own place it didn't it wasn't it wasn't like they were on the show in order to kind of get out of Essex to go live in Primrose Hill or Notting Hill. They were very kind of attached to their roots. And again, like I said, um, Mick Norcross played a huge part in it. So again, this is from UK Gossip TV, former Towie star and Sugar Hut owner Mick Norcross found dead at 57. Um, this is the following here. Former Junior Essex star Mick Norcross, 57, had been founded at his home in Farrak, Essex. It has been confirmed the Essex businessman is the father of Kirk Norcross, also starred in the ITV TV, in the ITV reality TV show. Again, so um full sky to kirkman must be difficult to deal with during this time mick was the owner of popular um, nightclub sugar hut which regularly featured in towie and hosted many celebrities from footballers to tv stars but it has been confirmed today that mick sadly found uh, deceased at his home in berl in, in bolfen Furrock. and again some pictures of him with his son and i think this is the last tweet he sent out before he was found um dead was at the end remind yourself that the best you could do and this is all that matters and i think you know a lot of i've said already i think there's going to be a lot of residual uh, effects of covid that are going to be felt for years and maybe decades to come and i think a lot of it that people don't really want to talk about because i think it may be it's a bit flag it's a bit like flag not flagrant but it seems a bit self-indulgent and it doesn't really seem like that serious but this there's there's a lot of people in nightlife or in hospitality who are really hurting because i think throughout this time that we've kind of been locked down I've come to the realization that there definitely is a separation, not separate. There definitely is a difference between people who are like nightlife people and hospitality people and people that are not right. And I think the tendency to kind of get drawn to that sector of work or that sector of employment or that sector of just recreational activities is definitely something that's kind of intrinsic in some and it's not intrinsic in other people so to not have the ability to go out and meet randoms talk at the you know in, in the smoking area have a drink get up to wherever in the toilets you know go crazy on the dance floor 
that's an intrinsic part to some of our lives and to have that taken away from us is really really debilitating and it's probably even more so for somebody that actually is an owner operator because your entire identity is sort of framed around being the sugar hut guy being the guy that works in hospitality being the guy that maybe is a bar and restaurant advisor being somebody that's investing in other places being somebody that's maybe uh, a mentor to people other people coming up but it's all framed around that entire industry when that gets taken away from you and you have no recourse there's no route out um the government loans and the supports aren't really what they need to be and like i mentioned previously a lot of uh, those business owners that i've been seeing have been speaking uh, via interviews and stuff they basically all of them have kind of said the same thing they don't really want to take out government handouts they much prefer to be able to reopen even at a smaller scale and just be able to earn their own keep because the the, the actual exercise of earning their own keep is what's provided them with some level of sanity and taking that away and just to letting them collect money uh, via the government whether it comes to loans or bursaries or grants isn't necessarily going to fix anything so those are the effects that are going to be felt um, for maybe years and decades to come so it really is on you know on us as like a community I guess in general to kind of look out for our friends and family who are associated with this industry checking on them as much as you can because the people these people are suffering in silence in my opinion again I don't know if this is anything to do with uh, Mick Norcross I don't want to put any um, illusions on there I'm just talking in general because it does seem to be a high prevalence of these big cases of people like there was that guy in Birmingham who who's a really big promoter out there who unfortunately passed away too and again we don't know the reasons behind it but i'll assume a lot of it you know having your entire identity stripped away from you and then having to re-pivot into another industry again because as frivolous and as annoying as nightlife can be in the whole scene there is something joyous and amazing about being able to carve out a little career for yourself right because it's really difficult to do how many people have opened bars and restaurants and clubs and they you know tank within the first 12 months how many people have tried to become djs or agents or open their own booking agency or be a promoter or put on a festival and loads of people have tried but it's very difficult to sustain a career in in that area right w with to any level of proficiency it's very difficult to do so when you once when you finally do achieve it the gratification is amazing because you're this is something that you've kind of lived for this is your life and then for it to suddenly be stripped away from you and then you have to pivot to another career that you don't want anything to do with it just must break people's hearts and i guess a lot of it must do it because i remember when um uh what's his name oh, i forgot the, the comedian's name but joey diaz's name uh what's his name what's his name the big the, the really massive dude obese comedian it doesn't matter but one of those really obese stand-up comedians who's friends with joey diaz i remember joey diaz basically saying when he passed away that allegedly he might have passed away from a broken heart because I think at that time he was going through a divorce and uh, his ex-wife at the time was alleging that he abused her and obviously it wasn't true but she was just using she was just kind of throwing that, that abuse thing out there to kind of um, speed up the divorce proceedings and allow him and basically force um, Ralphie May that's the guy basically forced Ralphie May into kind of requenting and kind of signing away whatever she wanted in the split of the divorce right and he basically said I think Joe Diaz said something along the lines of like that really crushed him right that really broke him that this woman that he loved once kind of put out this fake um, news about him which essentially ruined his reputation and he couldn't really live with himself right since then and he just passed away due to a broken heart he, he didn't even do anything to himself he didn't kind of um, what's that thing called expire himself in any sort of way it's just the idea of of like being crushed by somebody close to you just took out any amount of life and fight that you had in him and i'd imagine a lot of that is being um, felt by a lot of people in the nightlife and hospitality industry so again if you have those friends who work in that sector then definitely try and reach out if you can support them in any way possible because it's going to be a hard long slog for all of us going forward and again um r.i.p mick norcross um gone but not forgotten there's a couple of clips here from him from the show i'll play <laughs> 